there's one right there. <laughs> oh man, he came off, he pulled so hard. Oh no, he's still there, he was underneath my trolling motor. <laughs> Look at this fish. <laughs> Talk about giving it to me now. <laughs> Come on in here, son. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they are going after the bait this time of year, folks. We're, we're at Roosevelt Lake and I was casting out seeing these bait balls and I'm like, man, I gotta cast out there and see if I can catch a fish. And one of the great baits to do that with, and I can even jig this thing underneath, is this blade bait. I'm so stoked. It's made by, I, I was wanting to keep it a secret, but I guess it's no longer a secret anymore. Blitz Lures brings this bait out. It's been around a long time. S some other people have made them, but boy, that's just an awesome bait. Look how big that bait is too, compared to my hand. Look at that. They're eating it. Let me get back over here. What I was just doing was just kind of throwing it out there and he hit it right under the boat. So we gotta find where these fish are. I, I, I had a big one on earlier, just before we started. And what's really cool about this bait is it, is, is it shimmies as you reel it in. But I wanna get down there to the bottom and I'm just kinda of hopping it off the bottom and letting the blade do its thing and then letting it fall back down. There he is. <laughs> you gotta love pan optics, man. It's almost cheating. And you gotta love this blade baiting. <laughs> Look at that. Folks, this is awesome because I lost the school of fish I was just fishing for. And I lost the fish that were right under the boat because I had taken a cast. And what's cool about this bait, and like I've said it before, is this bait works really good. You could cast it out and wind it, and then you can jig it right under the boat just like a spoon. And I had a big school go under the boat while I had my cast out. And I thought, man, I lost it. And I realized, I realized with my pan optics, this Garmin stuff's awesome. They were behind the boat. So all I did was turn back and, and go back a little bit and drop straight down and boom, he hit it. This bait, I wanna go slow. I wanna do a slow, kind of a slow pull like that and let it fall down. It vibrates just like that as you pull it up. And a lot of times you get them like that. <laughs> oh, he's not very big. We didn't find a big school. It's a little bleed bass. That's a little one here at Roosevelt Lake. How much fun is this? Let me tell you what happens in the, in the fall. The water starts cooling down. When the water starts cooling down, these fish, bass, will start schooling up and chasing these shad. You'll start seeing shad blipping on the water. I love it when they start doing that. And a lot of times you'll see bass busting. If you don't see bass busting those shad, spoons is a good, or blades are a great idea. And what makes this so cool is you can see the shad blipping up. You can make the toss out there with your blade. Count it down, let it fall down underneath the shad school, start reeling it a little bit and catch those fish. If you don't do that, always watch your graph and work your bait just like a spoon and catch them. It's a lot of fun. So, you know, they make, they make a couple of different holes on this. I've got it in the middle hole right now. If I was gonna constantly crank and wind it, I'd probably put it on the front hole. See that front hole? And that'll help make it dive a little bit more as you're, as you're pulling it, okay? That middle hole's great so you can vertically jig it. And that's one thing I love about this bait. It's just an awesome bait. You'll really love throwing something like this. Oh, they're down there again. Let's get down there on them. You can see on the graph how thick they are down there. They're just thick down there. 
They're on the bottom. Now see how we kind of missed the, the fish. There's some there, but the thing is, is you can definitely throw it down there and catch them. And it's a lot of fun. You'll feel it vibrate. This particular bait, if you don't feel it vibrate as you pull it up, then odds are you probably need to, to uh, bring it up and get it unfouled because it's inevitable when you're doing vertical like that and you're popping your rod tip like that. Look at the fish on the graph right there. Just the 2D one. This is the 2D. Look at those fish down there. It's spaghetti noodles. We're gonna go right down there. We kind of caught up behind them. Sometimes they'll see it and they'll come and they'll, they'll get it. But this type of bait, instead of giving real quick twitches like you would with a spoon, I'm just kind of pulling it up and feeling it pop. Okay, look at these fish. See how they're sitting down there in 30 foot of water? We came up to 20 foot of water. There's some fish up in here, but down there in 30 feet, look at that. Just spaghetti noodles down there. A lot of times that tells you where the fish are kind of hanging out at. So always remember <laughs> that when you're going around, you can find the fish using that graph, find out when you come off the bank, where those fish are, find the drop-offs, whatever, and as soon as that drop-off hits, boom, they're right there on the drop-off. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn around and hit that drop off. Look at that school of shad out there. I'm just gonna throw it out there where those fish are and get them. That's what I'm gonna do. Cause there's fish out there eating on them shad. <laughs> Look at that. That's the thing I love about this bait too. It's just reeling it up and they come and get it. <laughs> oh, there was a school of bass swimming right underneath us that I was just reeling it up to them and all of them went over to it. And this was the one I got. There we go. Let's get back down there. You know, I, I threw it out there and uh, let it fall. And when they're suspended up like that, a lot of times you can bring this bait up and they'll follow it all the way up chase it up and eat it. Oh, there he is. Just a little guy. Just a little guy on that Rico. <laughs> I couldn't stand it. I saw some fish up here jumping around. Come on, you done? Are you done? <laughs> I couldn't stand it. I had to, I had to, I had to throw some top water up there on him. Easy does it there, buddy. There we go. <laughs> you know, a lot of times when you're doing the spooning, the blading, the things like that, and you're out here doing this, you'll see fish bust, and you better have a top water ready. And uh, a lot of times when they're busting. And I had a feeling that it was a bunch of those little ones. But I like to have a, a Rico ready. I've got the small one on because the shad are just little guys right now. So, and they seem to pop up every so often around me. So that's the only reason I had this on was to throw it out there and, and, uh, and give it a shot if they were, if they were gonna be busting. I thought a couple of them might've been pretty good fish, but man, when they start busting and you're close enough, always make sure you have a top water ready just in case because man you never know what size school will blow up on those shad and you want to be ready for that so even having your spoons everything you could be out in the middle of the lake and you'll see them just start blasting and you want to make sure you got something ready for that oh oh Got that one. I got that one. <laughs> God, I don't want to pull the hooks out, but I must have him foul hooked. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one, folks. That's a good one. Now, those are the ones we're looking for chasing them shad. But I got him hooked sideways. Look at that. He dove for it. <laughs> no, 
No wonder he feels like he's 15 pounds. Look at that. Now what ends up happening when you throw that out there and that happens, a lot of times, come here, <laughs> they swipe at it and they don't get it. And when you pull up on it, boy, they just get it. Look at that. And there was a bunch in there where he was. So we'll let that one go, but it's beautiful. Look at the size of that fish. That's what's chasing these shad in here. That played bait, man. When a bunch of them are attacking it, you bring it up and you let it fall. They swipe at it. They want to kill it, you know? That's why it's important to have good treble hooks on there. <laughs> I was watching them chase those shad around on the surface and I just threw out there and was kind of reeling it back, you know? And here's more coming underneath the boat here in a minute. Maybe we'll get them. Here they come, a whole school of them. Got him. I got that one. I got that one. Once you find the school, <laughs> there you go. There's another bleed bait bass. Look how fat these fish are. Oh my goodness. I got treble hooks on there. I got to be really careful. But they're down there feeding late afternoon but look they're fattening up man they're getting ready for the winter they're gonna be they're they're living in high cotton you know because they get to they get to uh, go after all these uh, shad for the whole winter and sit down there in deep water where they're comfortable Let's see if I can get one down here there's more down there look look so you can see all the fish down there I'm gonna let the blade fall down you can see the blade falling down. Let it fall down and see if something will, will get it. I prefer to see them swimming with the blade. I'm looking for those swimmers. They gotta be here somewhere. Ooh, I got bit. I gotta find, I gotta find that school. There they are. There's the school there. So that's what's so cool about the Garmin Electronics is you can find the school of fish hit that thing that looks like a big old shad that blade does what I did was throw that right in the middle of a bunch of shad you know folks for my tip of the week one thing that's kind of important to do I think especially when you have shad on on the surface and every so often you see them scatter like something's chasing underneath a lot of times and we can tell now by looking at our uh, Garmin Pan Optics, that there's a lot of bass underneath those shad. And what happens is, is they, they, they get in there and chase them and they, so they scatter and they blip a little bit on top, but the bass is really not hitting the surface. Where the blade comes in really handy is when you throw it out there, throw it out there past, if you can, the shad ball that you're seeing on the surface, and especially when you see them blipping up like that, and when you throw it out there, count it down where you think it might be under you know, count to maybe four or five and get it a little bit underneath that shad and, and just kind of rip the bait kind of slow like that. Just kind of pump the rod tip. And if you do that, a lot of times you're scattering those bait and the bass underneath go, hey, what's going on? They see this bigger profile, they go in there and whack it. And I'll tell you what, you'll catch a lot more fish. You can reel it through, but man, that, that uh, pulsating action of this bait coming through there, the vibrating and, and it, you know it just triggers the fish to hit and we've caught a few fish doing that today so definitely it's a great tip so when you throw out there just give the rod a little bit of pump action and when you do that I'm telling you you're gonna catch some fish but let it fall underneath the shad count to five maybe sometimes ten get it down there that way when you rip it up a little bit it'll come up a little bit and then fall and when it does that you're gonna catch some fish Hey folks, we're down here at DD26 with my good friend Dave Davis, great partners of the show, but we have to show you all the goodies they have and you're constantly adding more. But Dave, explain to us some of the stuff that you have to bling your boat out with and stuff that you need for your boat. You've got it all right here. We've grown a ton and have... <laughs> 
And what we're trying to do and accomplish here is make sure that a guy who wants motor totes and steering locks, he may only get those once or twice a year, but what else can we offer that'll help accessorize his, his rig in the color scheme that he's going for? So we have a ton of stuff, Johnny. Everything from fish management uh, with your cull tags and your way beams uh, to a scale, which we partnered with Catch Commander on. Uh, great scale there if you haven't tried that. I think you even used it on one of your shows here. Blinker billets, screen protectors. We know how much we spend on our electronics right now. <laughs> so at $2,000 a graph, uh, in the way I swing my crankbaits and weights around, I want something on there to protect it. But new stuff here, which is great. We partnered with uh, Wake Cumberland Motorsports, or Wake Cumberland uh, uh, with their Sea Deck products. And we have everything from the hot foot pedals to your trolling motor pedals. Uh, here's one that you might like, a Garmin oh, yeah. Force. We've got spooling stations. We've got sleeves for your rods. Another new product. I love that. When I saw this for your graphs, it's awesome. It's a cover for your graphs. Also a cover for your motor as well. If you don't want to, you know, get if you get in the trees here in Arizona, you go to Alamo, you're up there frogging, put something like that over your motor. It's perfect. Keeps you from scratching it. How do people get this stuff? Tell, tell them how to get this stuff. Different ways to get it. First place would be dd26fishing.com. Uh, everything is on the website that we have that we're showing you today and more. Uh, so feel free to use that. Um, we've got product on Amazon, Tackle Warehouse, Midway USA. Um, we've, we've been very fortunate to have great partners out there, a bunch of dealers that carry our stuff. DD26 made right here in Arizona, folks. Be sure to get their products. A lot of great stuff. Check them out on the web. Well, I'll tell you what, the only thing I don't like about the fall and the winter is it gets dark way too quick. <laughs> it's like five o'clock, I don't know, five, that's uh, 518. It's already getting, getting dark on us. We got to get in, but I'll tell you, I've had a great time today. Uh, getting out here a little bit late with these, but I'll tell you what, that blade bait is a lot of fun to throw. You'll catch some good fish on it. And like I said, you can either throw it out there like a spoon or you can throw it out there like a crankbait. Either way, it's a very valuable bait in the fall and the winter. I'll tell you what, you'll catch a lot of fish on it. Be sure to pick them up. Today I threw the one ounce. And, <clears throat> you know, I threw it because I knew I was gonna be in somewhat deep water back and forth, plus the fish are, I needed the fish to react to it. Cause when, it, when you throw it out there, they weren't really, if they got a good look at the bait as it was slowly falling, they weren't hitting it. It had to go down quick. And this goes down just a little bit quicker. But man, what a fun bait to throw. That blue and chrome's a great color. They make them in all different kinds of colors. They got them in chartreuse, they got them in white, they got them in all kinds of colors. You gotta go to Blitz Lures and check these out because you'll catch some fish on them for sure. <laughs> I had a great time on the show. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>